if you choose uh, the taking 50, 50 rupees and going home, then such a uh, attitude is called as risk averse situation. Okay, you are trying to you are trying to avoid such risky situation entering into the gamble. Okay, you you were given a chance of playing the game. Do you understand the question? It was you have uh, you had two choices. First one, you can participate in the gamble. The gamble was you have fifty percent chance of getting hundred dollars and fifty percent chance you will get nothing. And the other alternative was you can get five dollars and go home. Okay, so if you choose the second alternative, that is you you are choosing the fifty dollars and going home, then you uh, your attitude is a risk averse situation. You are a risk averse uh, person. Okay, if you choose you are going to play, you're going to play the gamble, then you are a risk loving person or risk seeker. Okay, then the third is risk neutral. Risk neutral here means you are indifferent to both you both both the situations you are okay so in such a condition you are indifferent to both alternatives then it is said to be risk neutral okay these were the three types of preferences and so now if we plot the utility utility of these individuals and the wealth then you will get the three types of graph as shown in the slide okay in the first case risk hours individual it is a what it is convex towards the center so it is a convex curve and for risk neutral it is a straight line and for risk loving or risk seeker it is a concave curve okay the utility um can draw it uh, so let's check on the graph a slide itself okay check the utility for um for a risk covers individual he will always prefer the sure thing okay so utility utility of the sure thing will be the higher than utility of gamble okay utility of gamble you are given the low uh, how can i show in this uh, uh, okay you are given uh, the green line shows the convex curve the discovers individual so Point uh, because it is sure thing. It's simply, it's simply if we if we plot the utility and the wealth, you will get a convex curve for risk averse individual and a con concave for risk loving person. The next is the next slide. Expect the utility theory through some illustrations. Uh, next slide okay so we have already learned uh, we are in expected utility theory we will try to find uh, try we will try to find out the risk and return simultaneously we will check uh, his risk covers or risk seeking or risk neutral as well as we will try to find out the expected utility okay and uh, it also takes the concept of diminishing marginal utility um, it is explained here for example, you are you are given ten thousand rupees. You earn ten thousand rupees, then you will get a higher, higher expected, uh, higher utility, higher level of happiness. If you are getting uh, ten thousand rupees, you will get higher, higher level of utility. Then again, you are getting another ten thousand. Okay, then you will be, you will not be that much. You will not have that much happiness level as, as you got at the first time. Okay. You 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 can you already have enough money to meet your uh, basic needs. Then you then you are getting ten thousand again. So you will you will be happy. Every person will be happy when you are getting money. You will be happy, but the happiness level will be much lower compared to the first time. Okay. That is diminishing marginal utility of money, and uh, we have already discussed the equation, and uh, it's real life application. Expected utility is uh ap applied in insurance sales first case is insurance sales insurance company usually, usually calculate uh, usually you um, aim at the long term financial gain okay they try to price uh, price their product at a range between uh, the consumer's willingness to pay and the amount that is fixed by the actuaries actuaries are those people who fix uh, the premium amount 
by evaluating all the steps they will say a amount so this is what the insurance company do is that they will they need to fix an amount which uh, which would incur them a profit as well as it should it should attract the consumers if if they need to attract the consumers then they will need to provide higher utility for the consumer so uh, to increase the demand the company will company will fix a fix a price which would be in between these between the um, act premium described by the actuaries and the consumers willingness to pay okay the next slide if they fix uh, if the amount is uh, if the amount is affordable by the people if the amount is affordable by the people what well, the consumers will be very much very much attracted to their product so their utility level will be very high if the premium is low then the utility uh, level will be very high and so the uh, people will get attracted to their product if the company will fix a low uh, high premium amount so compared with our uh, our real life situation itself if we are we are given a choice to um, to take an insurance and they are offering a high premium will you buy it no of course you will not buy it if it is in your your um, your affordable rate then you will buy it that's the condition here so uh, expected utility they will they will consider the expected utility of the consumer too so they need to fix in a such a range between the that of the actuaries the pre, uh, premium amount fixed by the actuaries and the expected utility of the willingness of the consumer to pay and the second case let's just look at second case here there is a, a new technology machine that is that is of rupees 5 lakh and you know that there is a chance a 20 percent chance that you will earn 8 lakh from this new machine and 40 percent chance that you will earn 5 lakh and there is a 40 percent chance that you will get nothing so will you invest in this in this technology that's the question so in order to find uh, find whether they will invest we are trying to uh, trying to find out the expected value expected value the value of uh, 5 lakh into it's uh, not 5 lakh uh, the value that is uh, you are getting the chances 20 percent probability 20 percent point two into 8 lakh uh, what is expected that you will get 8 lakh at 20 percent chance so it's point two into 8 lakh plus 0 0.40 into 5 lakh plus 0 0.40 into 0 that you are uh, at last is given 40 percent chance that you will not earn you will earn nothing so 0 0.40 into Zero. So when we are finding this expected value, we are calculating these values, then you will get three lakh sixty thousand. Okay. So what was the initial investment that you uh, you put for forward for this technology? It was five lakh, but it was five lakh, and you are getting only three lakh sixty thousand. Will you invest in that? So there, you, it will reduce your utility. You are getting only three lakh sixty thousand. You are taking risk of buying this machine. Still, you are not getting. Uh, the initial amount also so you will not invest in such an investment it will reduce your utility and you will not you will not invest in such a technology that is the second situation okay the next slide so here what is the main main sense is that in expected utility theory the person will be rational and he will he will consider all alternatives and he will try to find out the expected value and he will take uh, the alternative which derives him the maximum expected utility okay it, it was it is the main essence that he will take the alternative which has maximum utility so the criticisms regarding the expected utility theory there are three main criticisms the first one is allies paradox second Ellsberg paradox and the third one is Rabin calibration here Okay, first one is allies paradox. Allies paradox, the word allies. He, uh, it's the name of a person, Nobel laureate. More is allies. He won Nobel Prize in 1953 for this. And this paradox is that individuals overweigh probability for events, small events. Okay, let's um, uh, understand it deeply by taking an example. Suppose you are given there is a probability of 0.72 that you will win 12 lakh a lottery of 12 lakh and there is another prob another chance that 
of 0.75% chance that you will win 10 lakh. Okay, you are given two alternatives that you will, uh, there is 0.72 probability that you will win 12 lakh and 0.75 probability that you will win 10 lakh. So, now what will we do? We will try to find out the expected value. Expected value of the first first case, what is the expected value? 12 lakh into 0.72. And for the second one, 0.75 into 10 lakh. So when we find out that uh, it is 8 lakh 61, 64,100 and uh, 64,400 and the other one is 7 lakh 50,000, which is greater 8 lakh So we will choose what the first alternative of winning the lottery of 12 lakh at 0.72 percent okay now if we increase the probability by 0.25 percent okay if we increase increase the probability by 25 percent then what will be the new probabilities for the first alternative it will be 0.97 and for the second it will be one okay in this case also we will try to find uh, we are finding out the expected value 12 lakh into 0.97 and one 10 lakh into one so what we uh, got is what 11 lakh uh, 64,000 and 10 lakh which is greater the expected value of the first alternative is greater but here what happens is we are not selecting the first alternative we are taking the second alternative so here the man is not rational right he is not taking the one which has a uh, maximum utility he is taking the second choice this is the allies paradox okay here uh, as per the expected utility theory you should have taken the first alternative which derives you 11 lakh 64000 but here you have chosen only the, op the option which gave you 10 lakh so this paradox is known as allies paradox you are going for the sure thing okay uh, the next is Ellsberg paradox so the previous slide itself Ellsberg paradox. It was prop, uh, proposed by Daniel Ellsberg. Okay, this is also known as ambiguity aversion. The word is ambiguity aversion. The word uh, ambiguous. What what do you mean by ambiguous? The word meaning says it is something that is not clear. Clear, right? So in such a situation, if you are if you are not clear about a situation, then will we cho will you choose that alternative? Most of the person will not choose. According to human psychology, we will not choose such a, uh, in such an alternative which will which will, which will derive you uncertainty. So this is the paradox here, Ellsberg paradox. Uh, for detail, I will give you detail in, in, in explanation by giving an example. Consider two bags in front of you. You have you are given two. Uh, there are two boxes in front of you, X and Y. Okay, X both contains white white and black balls. And in X, it is uh, white ball, uh, 50 white balls and 50 black balls. And Y, you don't know the ratio. Both has white and black balls, but you don't know the ratio of the second one. Okay. So, it was given, uh, the, uh, a person was um, chosen to select one of the balls. And if you, if you get a right color, correct color, you will win. So, when we studied this experiment, what we realized was most of the persons took the ball from X. No one picked, 95% uh, of the people picked from X, the bag X. Why was this? The, uh, this was because they are trying to avoid the ambiguity. They are trying, uh, they, are, they are not clear about the ratio of the second box. So such a situation where people try to avoid amb uh, ambiguity is termed as this behavior is termed as ambiguity aversion. Okay, this is the second paradox. The third one is Rabin calibration paradox. So next slide. Rabin calibration paradox. This was propounded by Matthew Rabin in, in 2000 in his paper, Risk Aversion and Expected Utility Theorem, a calibration theorem. Here what, what is the paradox is that Individuals overweigh small losses and rejects utility. Okay. Individuals overweigh small losses and rejects utility. They are more uh, influenced by the losses. They, um, 
even uh, we all know that there is diminishing margin utility and we will gain only lesser utility when you are getting more and more money but uh, in case of losses you are you are um, you are taking the losses as way it is more painful for you okay this was observed by rabin uh, in the and as propounded by rabin check a calibration theorem okay this uh, for explaining it there is a game and it has two options 50% chance of winning 11 lakh and 50% chance of losing 1 10 lakh okay 50% chance to win 11 lakh and 50% chance to lose 10 lakh when we calculate the expected value it is um, 5 lakh 50000 for option 1 and for option 2 it is 5 lakh here what we observe is was that they won't choose both and people reject small uh, low value bets what here is what what actually rabin calibration paradox is that if we are given the 50 50 percent chance of losing if we are um, there is very much uh, painful for us even if we are getting such a uh, even if we are getting such a expected you if, if we are getting any gain we we won't be uh, more satisfied by the loss even if we are getting more and more money but there is a loss then also we are not satisfied okay even if the gain is infinite if, if the gain is infinite but simply it is not enough for uh there is no gain large enough to make them accept okay that is rabin calibration theorem the second uh, next is the difference between expected utility theory and prospect theory we have already learned prospect theory and just i had just made a comparison uh, expected utility theory was propounded by daniel bernavli and later developed by von newman and morgenstern prospect theory was uh, propounded by daniel kahneman and amos tversky and uh, next one is utility here in utility you expected utility theory we use we compute utility and in prospect theory we compute the prospect regarding it each and every alternative and this uh, third is third main difference is that uh, yes Neelu, what happened hello is for risk neutral linear and for risk loving is convex shape. and for a prospect theory it is an s shaped curve it has already been taught by gg um, s shaped curve the main uh, in prospect theory the main feature is that uh, in risk if, if the person is risk seeking then um, if the person is risk seeking uh, he will uh, he will be more more and more hmm? and uh, the last one is uh, the main in expected utility theory which led to expected utility theory was 10 features of the paradox and for prospect theory uh, all the flaws was rectified uh, all the flaws and uh, we said about rabin calibration theorem right and all those flows was rectified in this prospect theory expected utility theory also uh, uh, there is one more uh, difference expected utility theory considers the wealth, wealth but here in prospect theory we uh, we will consider the uh, reference point to which we will try, try to consider the gains and losses this was my topic so what what we learned till now is that what is utility, what is expected utility, and the genesis of expected utility theory. There is preferences, the three types of risk, and illustration, application that is in insurance and in many other technological wise alternatives, and then criticism. There, are three, there were there were three main paradox, which were those. First one, allies paradox. Uh, second one, Ellsberg paradox, and the third one was Rabin calibration.